All right, I'm back to talk about enums in C Sharp. And if you've watched my other videos, you probably think that I have something out for enums, that I hate them, that they're the bane of programming existence in C Sharp. It's just not the case. I see a lot of misuse of enums. So if you haven't checked out my previous videos, I'll link the first one up here. It's part of a series so far. And if you watch the first two and come check this one out, I think it'll make a lot more sense about where my perspective's coming from. Originally, I shared some high-level thoughts about enums and my perspective, and then the next video after that, I was focused more on what it means to be able to serialize and deserialize enums and some of the different options you have. But when we went through that, we could see that there were a lot of complexities that were added for very simple things. In this video, we're going to look at a paradigm shift where we start with some code that leverages enums, and then we're going to move away from that. We're going to look at something that can replace using enums in your code base. Now, I want to preface that this can't work in every possible situation, but if you start to think about your code and how it's interacting with things in this different way, you may find that you're using enums less. Now, if you're going through the series and it's starting to click with you and you agree with the concepts that I'm sharing about misuse of enums, you may be able to go back and refactor some code and apply some of this. Now, before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for my free weekly newsletter, and I'll have a link to my course there as well on refactoring. Let's check out this example. I'm gonna be looking through this product enum example, and we're going to start with looking at some offering types here. So I have a course, ebook, and a template offering type that I might have as different types of products or services that I wanna sell. In the previous videos, if you've gone back and watched those, You'll recall that we had a products enum. So if I go expand that, we can see that these were some different types of products. And just to reiterate, this is the type of pattern that I would not recommend you use because it's something that would be changing potentially quite regularly. I do recommend you try to reserve enum usage for things that either never change or change extremely rarely. When we look at the offering type enum that I have on the screen right here highlighted from 27 to 29, these are three different types of offerings. Now, this seems like it might change less than individual products, and that's probably true. However, if I wanted to start offering a service like one-on-one -on -one coaching, or I wanted to be able to offer you paid Discord access to my community, those would be new offering types that I have to think about including into this enum. So I wanna walk through some of the code that consumes this. We can think through what it means to start adding things into this enum, how that code would have to change, but I want to walk through how we might refactor some of this code to move away from that enum usage. A quick note that the code here is going to be a little bit contrived. I don't have a fully built code base using enums in a way that I think is inappropriate. If you're interested and you want to be able to share something like that with me, please reach out to me. I'm happy to make a video or we go refactor that. I'm not going to pick on your code, but if you want to volunteer it, we can use it to go refactor. All right, so I have this product record here and we can see that it has one property on it that's called ID, and then it has that offering type that we just looked at as well. So just these two properties on this record. Now, this product handler that we're going to go look at, it's a pretty contrived class. It's really lightweight, but it is a little bit artificial. But if we look at what it does, it has this method called do stuff, really because I'm bad at naming things and coming up with examples is tricky for YouTube. But um, the other thing I want to mention here is that some of the indentation you'll see is a little bit silly, but I'm just trying to do that to fit that on the screen for you. So um, the product type being equal to a template or an ebook, what we're doing here is making sure that we can go get a file name that we could go download and save that to. So we're getting like a default file name and then we want to get a download URL. So these are two types of resources that we could be offering. And if we want to be able to do something with them, we need to know if it's going to be an ebook or it's going to be a template. Because these are two types of things that would have these types of characteristics. But if we go into this resources helper, I'm trying to show you this, by the way, because I see code like this all the time where enums are used to do checks like this. If we have this code now, so this is inside of that, we have a similar type of thing, right? So if the offering type is going to be a template or an ebook, we might say, okay, like we know how to go handle that. Based on the type of the enum, we know what to go do. There's similar things where people are doing type checking in general, right? Like if object is this type, then go do whatever. Um, so in this case, it's not an object type, it's the enum. We're saying if the product has this offering type, 
let's go make sure in this case that we can get the download file, like the default uh, file name for it. And the other example right up here, again, does the same type of thing where it's like, we want to be able to check if it's a template or a book to get that download URL. What's interesting about this, I mean, this example, we probably would want to provide the ID or something else. It's, like I said, it's contrived. But the point I'm getting across is that we have a couple of different locations that we need to be doing this type checking or this enum value comparison. So we have template and ebook grouped together here, template and ebook grouped together here. Um, this, we probably didn't need to add it. Like these would come back as null if they weren't handled, but maybe to be safe, we wanted to do some defense in depth and add this on top of it. And we're stuck with three places now that do this type of checking. If I were extending my product offerings, so I want to give you an example. We go back up here and I go, you know what? My courses right now are all online, but I would like to add maybe some type of offline course, something downloadable. You can go through, maybe it's like a combination of an ebook, but um, it has uh, something you can download. It has quizzes and stuff like that, and you can do it all offline. So I'm gonna go create this offline course. If you watch the previous video, one of the things that we saw is that it can be kind of handy if you have to modify an enum, to jam things at the end of it. You're not disrupting the rest of the enum. It makes it a little bit maybe less organized when you're looking at the enum itself, but if you're serializing stuff, maybe it's more helpful. So I might say offline course, and this is a new type of offering I have that's technically downloadable from what we just talked about. So what I might go do is say, well, all of the spots that I needed to support this are these other spots where we have template and ebook. I would need to go find all of them, right? So it would look something like going to add an or condition here, product type, we have offline course. I'll move my head out of the way there so you can see it a little bit better. But then we take that and I'm just gonna copy and paste it to save some time, but we have to go put it in the other two spots as well, right? We have to go build out the rest of the logic here. It's not a uh, product type, it's offering type, right? So we need that here and we also need it in this third spot. And now all of these spots that are doing something with being able to download a product or this offering, we have support for it now. But this is sort of the paradigm that we look at when we're dealing with enums, right? Like when we use enums, we try to make everything enum centric. And what I wanna suggest is that we take a step away from focusing on the unique enum values. I want you to start thinking about a little bit more like abstractions or characteristics of the things we're dealing with. And I kind of hinted at what these things are as I've been talking through this. I mean, at least for the cases that I have on the screen and that we've been looking through. Now, what's common between all of these templates, eBooks, and offline courses, and it's a bit of a giveaway when we start looking at the logic that we have here, like the method names, these are downloadable resources. That's what they are. These types of product offerings have that characteristic. Now, Something that you could go do, depending on how, if you're thinking about your entities and entity framework, how this stuff is stored in a database or something else, what you could go do is maybe go back up to your um, your record that you have here for product, and you could go add properties onto this, right? You could have something that's like the download URL. It could have uh, the default file name when you're saving it. You could go add that stuff right onto the product. Now, you might say, well, Nick, that feels pretty gross because, you know, what about the online courses? Those those don't have a download URL. Those don't have a default file name to, to download to. And you're right. So I agree that would feel kind of weird. Now, you could go do that. You could have them be nullable and treat that however you'd like. Um, I'm not here to tell you that's right or wrong. It's probably not the option I would pick if I had the luxury to. Um, what I might do instead is think about separating that out into something else. So I want to think about my code that's operating on downloadable things, right? Downloadable offerings. Instead of just treating it as products everywhere, checking the type of the product, I want to be able to say, if I have a product, does it have downloadable characteristics about it? And that's the difference, I think. Instead of saying is the product A, B, C, and then having to come up with all these different variations that we keep tacking on, especially if they're spread throughout the code base, like not a good time. Try to think about 
does this product have this characteristic? So I want to show you a slightly modified version. It's a similar type of setup here, but it's slightly modified to be able to accommodate for that. And what we might start to see if I scroll down here is this downloadable resource record that we have now. So this is getting into a bit of like domain modeling and stuff like that. There's uh, creators online that are infinitely better at explaining this kind of thing. Derek Comartin from Code Opinion is absolutely amazing at talking about this kind of stuff. So uh, I might be butchering some of the terminology. And if you want, you could do something like tag Derek or send him this video and see if he'll he'll pick on it and stuff. Uh, I, I love to, to hear his different thoughts and opinions. So I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too upset if he if he hurt my feelings about me uh, misrepresenting some of this stuff. But I think that if you had a separate entity to try and model this kind of downloadable behavior, that could work really well. And I think that it could help us move away from having these enums, at least in this particular case, if everything was focused on downloading, we could pull out that concept and have it as a downloadable resource. So what I've done is I've just given this entity its own ID. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want in your modeling, but this has a relationship back to the product whether or not the product has the relationship to this or this to the product or both ways outside of the scope of this conversation. But you can see that now this entity that we're talking about, this record, has a download URL and it has a default download file name. These were the, the things that we were trying to codify in the other parts of the code. So the idea here now is that we don't need to go check for different types of product offerings. We can simply go ask, does our product have a downloadable resource associated with it? And that's, there's no enum, right? <laughs> this, this has nothing to do with an enum. We've effectively moved away from needing an enum for that. And to prove it to you, I want to kind of go through this code example. Like I said, it's going to be very similar. I just added a two onto some of the names here. But this do stuff method used to do some enum checking. I said it might be a little bit overkill, and I, I stand behind that. I think that could still be overkill, but we've been able to do away with that, so that's not so impressive. But you can see that I have this resources helper where we're getting a downloadable. That means after we ask for that, we should either have one or not. So you can't see the IntelliSense, but this get downloadable, if I jump into it, has a nullable downloadable resource that comes back. So. What we're able to do is, given our product ID, we could go look up that product and ask to see if it has a downloadable resource associated with it. If it does, and we could check that from the database, right, or have, um, if you wanted, you could do some type of mapping in here and have your product list. It doesn't feel very good to me, but you could do that and not have an enum and be able to return a downloadable resource record, right? The enum has gone away. So if it exists and you have a downloadable resource record, pass that back. If not, it's null. And then we go back up here and then we can do stuff with that. I mean, if it was null, we could return out or do some handling that we need to do. We didn't really define that in the other spot, but if you have it, then you can proceed to go operate on it. And again, the point of kind of showing you this is that we were able to go from having to check, is this resource or this product offering is it one of these types that we support? And if we keep changing that, we'd have to keep extending or modifying those lookups. We just dealt with not having that at all, right? We started thinking about what's the concept of what we're dealing with here. Why are we checking for that? And the reason why we were checking for that in this case was because these were downloadable types of resources. Now, I'm not going to go through more code because it's all kind of contrived, right? But if we think back to the rest of this enum, what are some other characteristics or groupings that we might see, right? Like I added offline course and we have course here. Maybe we have logic that operates on courses in general. So what you might be able to do is instead of having this enum around still to be able to say, you know, if uh, offering type is course or offering type is offline course and having that in a bunch of different spots, you could say, I'm interested in knowing if my product has characteristics of a course. And you could have that as state, as an object or a data transfer object. You could have a record representing that. So you move away from having an enum, and instead you'd be able to go look up whether or not the product you're dealing with 
has some type of chorus characteristic. To give you one more flavor of that, if I wanted to sell physical books as well, right, I'm not appending it in this case, I'm just going to tack it onto the middle, but I have two types of offerings that are book-like, right? So if I had logic in my code that was dealing with book-like things, instead of saying offering type equals ebook or offering type equals book, I could just ask for that characteristic. The other important thing to mention here is that you don't need multiples, right? I don't need to say, do I have an ebook or a book in order for this kind of paradigm shift to happen and move away from the enum to this characteristic, you know, different paradigm that we're talking about, even for templates, right? If I have something like a reusable document that's a template, sure, I talked about downloadables, but if I wanted to do something with templates, Maybe I have some logic for my website or some system I've built where templates can be, you know, dynamically populated online. You can clear them. I don't know. We have support for things that are templates. Now, I don't need to have an enum to represent that. I could go try to define that state as, you know, another entity or record and have all of the traits that are associated with template things as part of that. So the point that I'm trying to get if I were to generalize it is that instead of building logic into your systems that need to understand the different characteristics of the enum, instead I'd like you to think about pulling out those concepts and separating them out into different things. You can have that as state, you can have different parts of your code different algorithms operate on that state, you know, those different characteristics of the things you're dealing with, instead of having them do something like look up a value, match it. If it's a match, go perform the logic. Now, I just wanted to say that I get that going through this example can seem a little bit tricky to rationalize and wrap your head around unless it happened to click. And I know that sometimes using contrived examples can be like, well, Nick, that's pretty artificial. Like, that's not real. How is this applicable? So I get it. Um, I'm just trying to find ways that I can walk through this and make sense of it. So something else that I want you to think about if you're familiar with object-oriented programming concepts is that this same type of thing comes up a lot. I kind of hinted at it earlier in the video. But instead of writing code that says, is this like, is object of this type? If so, do these things. Instead of doing that, we find different ways to structure our objects such that that logic is built into them, right? So that they're the ones that provide that to us. Or we put facades in place that know how to deal with that. Like we have different mechanisms to hide that kind of matching for us. With enums, it's the same type of thing. It's just that I find, based on the code that I've seen uh, over many years, this kind of stuff gets scattered, this logical lookups, it gets scattered everywhere. And then when you want to modify the enum, which I'm recommending you don't do, but people always seem to set them up this way. If you're doing that, you have all of these spots to change and there's a lot of overhead. So I just wanted to give you this example so that you could walk through it with me, see how you might be able to rationalize refactoring some of your code. And if it makes sense to you going forward, you can try to take this approach instead of just tacking on more enums in places. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this one clicked and we'll see you next time.